Hey, this is Brad Tipton, and I am what's called a equity law strategist. You go, equity law strategist, what does that do? We help people to stop foreclosure, to discharge every type of debt, set it at zero, and then create, if they want to, create a private trust, right? So if you're in a situation, you're facing a foreclosure, you need help, you need that stop immediately, an equity law strategist can help you with that. That's me, right? If you're in a situation where you owe student loan debts and it's really difficult on you, or you have fees, a MasterCard, whatever your debt issue is, IRS, whatever it is, and you need that stop right now and shut down and set to zero, then an equity law strategist can help you with that, right? And if you need to set up a, a private trust so that you can leave a legacy, financial and economic le legacy to your family, we can help you do that. So those are the people that we help. But I want you to understand, we operate in an area that's called equity law, right? Most folks never heard of equity law. Most folks have always heard of what's called law, legal, right? That's, but the, the exact term for that is called uh, statutory law. The reason it's called statutory law is because it's based upon rules and codes and statutes, right? That have been set up by the government. Right. Of course, that's what it's about. That's why it's called statutory law. The challenge with statutory law is if you're facing a foreclosure, it probably can't help you. Right. If you're dealing with overwhelming student loans or some sort of Visa, MasterCard, medical debt, IRS debt, automobile debt. Right. Statutory law is like, hey, if you sign the debt, you got to pay the debt or we're going to come and get the car. Right. Or you sign the loan, you better pay the mortgage. We're going to come and foreclose on the house. If you IRS, you know, we're going to we're going to garnish your wages. Right. Statutory law is just it, it's very legalistic. It, it binds you up. It never it doesn't have words in it like freedom. Right. Mercy. Right. Uh, give me a break. It doesn't have any of that in it. It's not designed for that. That's what equity law is designed for. So let's say you had a situation where you're you, you're there. You're having difficulty paying for your house note, right? Because you got divorced or because uh, you were a two family income. And now for whatever reason, you become a one family or COVID hit or they cut your off your, your, your hours or the cases, right? Equity law can stop a foreclosure, right? Like that. Equity law can take whatever debt that you owe and set it at zero, right? Equity law can do that for you, right? Whereas with statutory law, which is what, you know, courts and attorneys and judges and all those guys go by, right? They, they operate in statutory law. Like for instance, let's say that you are, you, 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 um, two o'clock in the morning, you're fumbling around in the kitchen and you, you, you accidentally slice your finger and it's bleeding like crazy. You tried to wrap it up, right? With some tissue or some tape or whatever it is. And it's still bleeding. You know, you're in trouble. Right. You're going to jump in the car and you're going to head to that that emergency room as soon as <clears throat> as quickly as you can. But it's two o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden red light. And as you know, according to statutory law, red light means stop. Yellow light means yield. Green light means go. Why? It's not like that's not like in the Bible. Right. It's something that people drew up. They, they thought, OK, let's do this. Like right here it is. Red light. Stop. Red light never means go, right? Red light is stop. It's two o'clock in the morning. You're bleeding profusely. You better get to that hospital or you could lose the finger or lose your life. And so you decide, I know it's a red light. I've looked left, I've looked right. There's nobody coming. It's two o'clock in the morning. There's no pedestrians. I'm going because I got to get there, right? Well, if your city is like my city, they have cameras. And as soon as you go through that red light, click, and you're going to get a ticket. Just that simple. And if you don't pay that ticket, they're going to suspend your registration, your license plate. And if you drive with that suspended registration license plate, right, you're going to end up with a bigger fine or you're going to end up in some sort of jail or whatever the case is. Right. That's just how it goes. That's how statutory law works. Red light means stop. You don't go. You're like, no, no, no way. I, I, I get it. I, I, I realize it, but I cut my finger and it was late at night and I did look around. And it's, they're like, we don't care about that. Red light means stop. No, you, you gotta understand, but if, if you let that bleed too long, that could, you, that could, you could lose the finger. You could, red light means stop. Right? That's statutory law. It don't play. Pay the, pay the mortgage or we'll foreclose. 
No, what happened? We were two family income and my wife came down sick and what she, her hours were cut and pay the mortgage or foreclose. Right? Pay the student loan or we're going to garnish your wages. Pay it. You sign, right? You sign. Where's it here? You sign a note, promissory note. Remember back there, two years ago, you weren't saying that when you got the house. Four years ago, you weren't saying that when you were trying to go in school. You signed a note back here. So now we're enforcing it and you pay it. Right? You, you, didn't, you didn't have a problem signing it when it was time for you to get that brand new car. No, but what happened was they cut my hours and it. You pay this or we're going to take that car back. You sign the note. That's how it works. That's how statutory law works. What I'm telling you is there's a level of law that can save you from foreclosure. There's a level of law that can save you from student loan, overwhelming student loan debt, right? Overwhelming automobile debt, but you still need your car, right? To get back and forth to work, right? Right? Overwhelming IRS debt, right? That type of thing. There's a law called equity law that can save you from that, where the statutory law is like, look, right? You signed the note. Here's our evidence and our proof. You signed it, you pay it, you shut up, or we're going to take your car, or we're going to foreclose in your house, or we're going to garnish your wages, garnish your wages, garnish your wages because of IRS, because of student loans. We're going to wreck your credit, right, if you don't pay. So pay. It's like zero flexibility, right? Zero flexibility with that, right? They don't care if your hours got cut. They don't care if you went through divorce. They don't care if you came down with can't, right? They don't care, right? Statutory law is what it is. Red light means stop, you stop, no matter what, or you pay. That's how it works. So that's why I operate in the area of law called equity law, right? Equity law says, well, wait a minute, let's see what's going on. What I want to talk to you today about is something that's super powerful. If you're facing foreclosure, if you're facing garnishment, if you're facing our IRS issue, if you're facing some overwhelming debt and you are just having it, right, whatever it is, right, you're just facing it and it's really hard and you're having a difficult time. I want to let you know that there's something in equity law that's called a rescission, right? It's called rescission of contract, right? This is just my little thing that I drew up, right? With a rescission of contract, I know you signed the note. I get it. Remember back here, two years ago, one year ago, 10 years ago, whatever it is for a house or a car or IRS or student loans or whatever it is. Remember back here, you signed it, right? Here it is. You signed the note. And according to statutory law, you better pay it or we're going to, right? That's how it works with statutory law. But with equity law, which is the area that I operate in, it's different than that. I know you sent it, you signed it back here. But what we can do is like you signed it back here, right? You get it. You signed the note. You owe it. You get it. You realize that you signed it back here two years ago, 10 years ago, three years ago, six months ago, four years ago when you started school, whatever the case is, right? I'm saying with there's, there's something called a rescission of contract, right? You can find it in Black's Law Dictionary. That's what attorneys and lawyers and everybody go by. They go by, they don't go by Merriam Webster's Dictionary. They go by, they go by Black's Law Dictionary. And in Black's Law Dictionary, there's something called rescission of contract. And even though you sign this note, right? You sign this note that Obligate back here, you signed it, obligated you. Today, you could write, write the rescission document. And what the rescission document does is this it's really powerful. It takes that note, right, that you signed back here, and it turns it into this. Notice there's no signature on it. No signature means you're not obligated anymore. Right. The rescission of contract goes, it, the rescission of contract 
it has this wild ability to what I call time travel go right it takes it takes it takes the note that you signed right see that signature on that note that that note that you signed two years ago ten years ago whatever the case is right the rescission of contract that's available in equity law this rescission has the ability to time travel that's what I call it it has the ability to time travel back here right get a hold of the note that you signed and obligated you and turns it into this no signature no signature no obligation because what happens is when they come after you they're coming after you saying look you signed it you better pay this or we're right that's how that's how they roll we're gonna repossess right we're gonna foreclose or we're gonna garnish right whatever it is this is the document that gives them the ability or what the courts call the standing to foreclose on you. Gives them the standing to repossess. Gives them the standing to garnish. The, the note, the signed note, the signed and dated note. That's what gives them the ability, the, the standing to hurt you and your family. They don't care if COVID turn, hurt you. They don't care what you're, this doesn't care. It's like, this is the note you pay or we're gonna throw you and your family out into the streets, right? You pay and I, you don't, if you don't pay, I get it, you need your car to get back. We're gonna take it and repossess it, right? I know you owe this IRS debt, we're gonna garnish you or student loan, we're gonna garnish the I have Visa mascot, we're gonna garnish you because of this document. This signed document, but with the rescission, right, right, with the rescission, right, you create that, it goes back into the past, connects itself to the document, the obligating document that you signed, and it removes the signature. It removes the obligation. It removes the document that gives them the ability to take the house, right? To garnish the wages, repossess the car, right? The sign note is what gives them the standing, the right to do that. But if you remove the signature through what's called a rescission of contract, which is what's available in equity law, which is if you need something, like if you're struggling and you need that, just my information is below, bradtipton at yahoo.com, right? bradtipton at yahoo.com. You reach out to me, say, hey, Brad, I need your help, right? So that's what we do. So like I said, my name is Brad Tipton and I operate in an area of law that's called equity law. I'm an equity law strategist. Right? I'm not an attorney, right? The attorney works in what's called the statutory law. Courts and judges and all these guys, right? They operate in that statutory law, right? That you better, right? That law is where, this is a different world over here, right? It's just a matter of creating the right document, creating the right um, rescission document, mailing it into the debt collector or the creditor or servicing company or the IRS or state taxes or whatever it is, right? You mail that to them and it removes the obligation of you having to do it. But here's the other thing. You always want to be a person of integrity. You want to be a person of honor because people say, hey, Brad, but don't I owe it? Yes, you do. So we need to get the debt settled properly, right? We need to get the debt settled properly without them taking your house, without them taking your car, without them garnet, right, 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 right. I told you what we do is we stop foreclosure. We stop, we, uh, we stop, uh, we can, we can take any debt that you have and get it discharged and settled, right? That's what we do. We create, help people to create private trust, right? That kind of thing to, to leave a financial legacy. To defend. Those are the things that we do. So if you're struggling and you're in trouble and you need somebody to help you to draw up a document, right? Simple document called the rescission of the contract. We can help you with stuff like that. 
Statutory law, an attorney is not going to help you with that, right? A judge is not going to help you with that. The government is not going to help you with that. They operate in what's called statutory law, also known as common law. We operate over here in what's called equity law, also known as chancery law. This has the ability to forgive, right? To give you a break, to help you out, to discharge the debt, to stop the foreclosure. This doesn't have that ability. So if you're struggling, you need some help. My contact information is below. And if you need to discharge a debt, student loan debt, foreclosure, mortgage, automobile, IRS tax, state tax, local tax, right? If you need help with that, don't, don't let this take it from you. Learn how to operate over here and get the result that you want and still stay in honor, right? So my contact information is below. If you need any help, let me know. My name is Brad Tipton, and you can reach me at bradtipton at yahoo.com. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Bye.